couple months ago I was scrolling on TikTok and I came across this video. Get your gosh darn knee pads on and crawl. It seems like nobody wants to crawl these days. You have to surround yourself with people that want to reorganize their brain. Now, I had no idea why this woman was crawling on the ground, what it had to do with brain disorganization and maybe how ADHD was involved. So I decided to do some research, started binging all their videos and then eventually reached out to them because I'm like, I want to know more. I want to talk about this on my YouTube channel. I want to see if this is like a real thing. So I sat down with the co-founders of In The Cortex to talk all about brain disorganization and how the movements that you made as a small child impact you to this day and how your brain can actually get better as an adult by creeping and crawling on the floor. Yes, I said that. So here is a little bit of my interview. Um, I didn't do, play the whole thing, um, but I also wanted to show you guys kind of me attempting to creep and crawl. Um, I haven't done the full program that they they offer, but I just wanted to share it with you guys because if that's something that you're interested in, I wanted to provide it as a resource. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this interview and learn more about why creeping and crawling is beneficial to resetting our brains and getting less disorganized. So let's get to the interview. And what we do it in the cortex is we basically help people reorganize their brain. So we provide you with the movements that your brain might have missed when you were a baby that will help your primitive brain finish developing and honestly, in the end, will make your life a lot easier. Can you kind of explain what a disorganized brain is? Like, is that the same as ADHD? Is that it like, or is that just like anyone? Like, I guess I just have that question because a lot of my content is on ADHD or is that just like people who just generally have a struggle with their, their brain organization? That ultimately a disorganized brain is a brain that didn't get enough movement in the first year of life to develop the primitive brain so that the primitive brain can do its automatic jobs automatically, right? So that ultimately means that the cortex has to compensate for all those jobs that should be automatic because they're not. And these are really important things like, oh, I don't know, breathing, you know, like things that like you need to do for, for life. Um, and so ultimately a disorganized brain is a brain that is living off of compensations rather than truly being able to access the automatic functions that you need to Live. The way we see it is that ADHD, ADD, autism, whatever label is out there, we're looking at behaviors, right? So everyone's trying to get a need met. If you have ADHD, tend, you tend to have a hard time focusing. You tend to bounce from one thing to the next. You tend to feel like everything's overwhelming your brain at once. And so we look at it and say, well, what does the brain, what is the brain doing? So all we do is we look at the way you move. And we look at two different main patterns, the creeping and the crawling, and those are directly connected to two different parts of the brain. So we put you in a position and we ask you to move. And the way you move indicates what access you have to these automatic functions in your brain. So according to them, they have four different components of their program. First is talking about the pons, which is kind of like the emotional core of your brain. So like figuring out your circadian rhythm and all those things. Then the second part is they talk about the midbrain, which is kind of where a lot of the ADHD struggles come in. So like memory focus, uh, you know, just like dopamine, sensory stuff. And then the third section is these primitive reflexes, which again, we'll talk about in a second. And then finally, subconscious beliefs. So that's super interesting. It's different than anything anyone else offers around this topic is they talk a lot about, about your beliefs and, and kind of the inner stuff and the emotional stuff. So that's super interesting that that's kind of how they focus on, on setting up their program. We can break down, this is what your life looks like. I know nothing about you because I can tell what access you have to your brain. And so we look at the first part of the brain, that's developing the pawns that's supposed to develop from zero to five months of life. And so if there's any interruption in that, if there's any trauma, if there's anything that happens that disrupts it, it then throws off the whole symphony that needs to occur afterwards. So then we're also looking at your crawl, the way you crawl, the way your hands are placed, the way your feet are placed, the way your back is, the way your head is, the way you have cross lateral movement, that'll connect to the midbrain. And that is supposed to offer a set of functions as well. So we go, oh, so if you identify and say, I have ADD or ADHD, well, we say, let's see what your crawl looks like. And then we can break down that pattern and go, I bet you, you have a hard time with reading because your hands are out to the side when you crawl. And they're like, yeah, how did you know? It's like, well, because the eyes aren't working with the brain how they need to. So as soon as you crawl enough times, you'll see a, a baby who's crawling across the floor efficiently, they've got their hands moving like this. And, um, and in today's world, we're seeing so many variations of these patterns, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so aside from the creeping and the crawling, 
then we dive into all these reflexes, these primitive reflexes, again, that need to go in a specific order and a, a time. And so if we're interrupting any of these periods in utero or the first year of life, it kind of halts development and keeps the brain stuck in the survival space. And so everything that comes at you, because we're not living like cavemen anymore, running from tigers, but we're sitting in traffic. We're being asked to put on our shoes if we're small children. We're being asked to do homework. We're being asked to do presentations. And the brain's interpreting it as if it's a tiger chasing me. So that's why people freeze. They start to sweat. They turn bright red. They start to panic. And then they run away or they try to fight and come out with aggressive words. It's the brain is totally wired the same but we're living different worlds, right? So we help you integrate those parts of the brain. And then we dive into the other part, which we'll talk about at another time, but that's the emotional stuff. And that's where all that will make your brain go back into survival mode if you feel like you're in a similar position. So one of the things that I learned in this conversation was that it takes up to almost a year for this to work. Um, to be at 100%, but you'll see results within the first two to three weeks of creeping and crawling and going through their program. Um, I just thought it was so interesting to me that, you know, this is just such a new concept to, for a lot of people, but yet, you know, primitive reflexes are something that has been studied for a long time, especially in children. And I think all of this is so fascinating. So I wanted to ask them a little bit more about primitive reflexes and kind of what those are. So here's a little bit of information about those. So Primitive reflexes are automatic instinctual movements that are designed to keep you alive. And we always say alive in the first year of life because that's when they really should be active. But some of them go a little bit longer up until two years, but they all begin in utero and they're designed to keep the fetus alive, protect the fetus from mom or whoever's carrying baby um, to keep that from not demanding too much from the mom and also getting baby into position to come out into the world. Um, so we're seeing a huge shift in how babies are being brought into the world in today's world. And it's not that there's a bad or a good, but there is an effect of what's happening neurologically speaking. Um, so that's an important piece because the way that you're born does have a big role as to how things are set up for you later in life. Um, so there's that. And then in that first year, you're doing movements where you're just like laying on your back and moving slowly or protecting yourself from stimulation or your way of getting your needs met. These are all innate movements that are built into us. And so we don't have to audit, like think about it, it's all automatic. They're great for survival in your first year, but if they don't get the integration that they need, then they stay on and active. So that's like a person today, an example of this is, let's say you're in your house, you're in your safe home, right? And you're, let's say you're brushing your teeth because this happens a lot with people and someone sneaks up behind you and you're like, oh my gosh, you scared me. It's like, but if you really think about it, you're in your house, you're safe, you know who's there with you and you shouldn't be that startled, right? But that's just your brain doing one of those automatic reactions. Um, so that's, those are why we want to integrate those because the minute you stand up and start walking, everything neurologically basically halts from that perspective of like, nothing's really shifting. So that's why we do these movements. So that way you can go out into the world today and not experience road rage because road rage, someone cutting you off is your brain going, it's time to fight or it's time to flight, whatever it is. Um, and that's where, that's a main reflex that we teach you really early on is how to integrate that reflex. So that way you don't respond that way. Um, so that's what the key part of those are all, all of this is designed to keep you alive because you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't do anything as a baby. You're relying on movements to protect you, right? Like babies will crunch to the side to protect their they'll scream really loud, but there's a loud noise. Um, but they want, we need to give babies enough movement to get through them. So that when they're upright, they now can just handle the world for what it is versus a distorted reality. So one thing that was really interesting to me that I asked was that, should I just start crawling every day? Like, is that something I can do on my own? And she, they talked about how the first step is actually developing the pond. So creeping first, getting that solidified, then moving on to crawling. So I thought that was really interesting. I just wanted to mention that, that, you know, even though you're seeing a bunch of people crawling on TikTok, that the creeping is actually the foundational element first. We all do it all through movement. So you're not sitting there having to think consciously, how do I act a specific way? You're just doing these kind of funky movements. And then the brain goes, all right, cool. I got what I needed. Now I can start accessing my higher functioning brain because I'm not back here in survival mode. I can actually respond now. 
I don't have to stop and tell myself to think and take a deep breath. I just do it naturally. And so that's why this program is so great for two-year-olds to a hundred years old, because you don't have to sit there and really effort and think anymore. It just becomes effortless. So it's available for people of all ages is what you're saying. So like, can you kind of explain? Cause I know people always say like after 25, your brain like stops developing. I'm sure that's probably a myth. What, how, how do you respond to that question? I guess. But the truth is that neuroplasticity exists in the brain throughout our entire lives. So it's definitely larger and bigger when we are little babies because our brain is learning everything about the world. Um, and our brain finishes maturing when we reach age 26, 25. There are all these different studies. Some of them say it's like 29. So, you know, basically don't make any major decisions in your 20s, just saying. Um, but the, the truth is that even after that stage, neuroplasticity still exists. So that's where we say anybody can do this at any age, because as long as you have the ability to get on the floor and creep and crawl, then your brain is going to respond in the same way that it did when you were an infant. So can you kind of explain how crawling can help or, or creeping mm -hmm. or what's the difference between creeping and crawling? And then what, what does crawling do to help? So creeping is the first movement we introduce and it's the one when you're on your belly and it's basically like what tummy time is. So when everyone's like, you got to do tummy time and most people say, oh, it's for neck development and strengthening and muscles. Yeah, that's great. But it's actually for developing the pawns. So you're on your belly and all we tell you is moving from point A of the room to the other side of the room. And all you have to think about are your hands in front of you, your chest is low, your belly is low, move your body any way you want. And so that'll give us an indication of what's happening with that part of the brain. And then we move you into crawling, just like a baby would go from being on their belly to now on their hands and knees. And then crawling is from six to 12 months of life, roughly. So that um, we're asking you just to crawl, look forward and crawl. And, um, and so as your brain gets more exposure to these movements, your brain naturally wants to find a more efficient way to move. And then all of a sudden, it's like at the same time that you start moving more efficiently, your life starts to shift and get easier. And everyone goes, it's, it's a natural feeling. It's who you were always supposed to be. So some people are like, oh, but you know, maybe my nine-year-old son just matured a lot in a month. We're like, okay, that's one way to see it. But we see this over and over again. When you give the brain what it needs, it starts to figure out how to move efficiently. And at the same time, your life starts to change. And what's so cool is we'll be like, okay, this is about to happen. And then it starts to happen. And then they're like, how did you know it was going to happen? I was like, because the brain is craving movement. Everything is movement. And so when we give it the right movements that it needs, all of a sudden things just click into place. It's also, we've done that because people know what crawling is and mm. it's, you know, it's easier to talk about the crawling. Um, and because there is a huge population out there that identifies with the, the challenges associated with an underdeveloped midbrain, which is the ADHD or that's mm -hmm. me. Like, it's mm -hmm. funny because we also have like the different profiles. Like Danny was totally the pawns and I'm totally the midbrain, right? So I totally scattered, always late, always late, always late. Okay. Mm -hmm. Starting things, never finishing them like ever 7,000 million different projects all over the place. Right. And I was also that kid that you know, my brother had struggles and I didn't notice this until now as an adult, I look back and I'm like, I was compensating like crazy, dude. Like I, until I got to, I don't even know, I guess college. I, that's when I was like, you know, things started to be very clear. I had a lot of like, emo like rage issues that would come out. Um, and I think if I had gone to a doctor, I probably would have gotten a, an ADHD diagnosis, right? And that's the piece that that develops with the crawling. And so actually when I started the 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 brain work, I was like, I don't need the creeping. I'm just gonna do crawling. And I saw some benefits and I really did see a lot of changes, but there were still things that I was like, mm, that doesn't resonate. And the second I did the creeping, I everything changed. Uh, in the cortex.com, our Instagram is in the cortex underscore us. And our TikTok is in underscore the underscore cortex. You can email us at hello at in the cortex. Danny and I answer all of those emails personally. And the biggest thing is you can set up a free 15 minute call with one of us. We both like it's, it's just us in the company. So it's, <laughs> we will talk to you and we will answer all of your questions because we know this is weird. So just ask us everything, basically. <laughs> okay, so 
I guess I'm gonna creep and then crawl. So you're supposed to creep first and then crawl. Um, I'm doing this in my bedroom and I don't know how much the camera's gonna be able to see, but <laughs> I'm gonna creep. Like it almost, it's like takes me a step second to like do like the first one, right? So I'm like, ba -dum, ba -dum. so as you can see, I attempted to crawl and creep, just kind of show you guys a little bit. I would definitely recommend checking them out on TikTok. They do it way better than me. Um, I haven't gone through the program yet, but I am so curious if any of you guys have um, what your feedback is from their program. If you're interested in looking into it, what are your thoughts on this whole concept? Do you think that this is something that would help you? What are your thoughts? I would love to know in the comments. I am going to be interviewing some other people on other different topics around ADHD because I think it's so interesting to have other experts on here, um, including stuff about home organization. I'm going to be doing stuff on menstrual cycle, which is going to be super fascinating. I'm super excited about some of these videos coming up that we're going to be talking about. So anyways, hope you guys had a great time watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more, join our Facebook groups, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!